So, we are considering how to convert first order formulas into some normal forms like your DNF or CNF. Then we came across one hurdle which was to bring the quantifiers first to the beginning right and that again had some problem like there can be some free variables, some bound variables with the same name right. The same variable can be both free and bound. So, we need to define some terminology then we can be easily talking about them. We call that a formula is rectified. rectified if no variable is both free and bound and also we need another that the different quantifiers do not use the same variable right and distinct occurrences of quantifiers do not use the same variable. Okay. So, first we want to convert uh, each formula to its rectified form. Rectified form may not be unique because you may have to use renaming of variables. So, depending on what name you are using the formula will also depend right is that ok. But then when you implement in a machine what it does is just renames all the variables from the beginning itself. If x is there it takes x 1 it does not know what x is. So, rewrites all the variables first then when some variable is not in the correct form. So, it rectifies the whole formula by renaming it to next index. So, suppose x 1 to x 10 has been used in the formula and there is a sub formula where it needs renaming. So, it uses x 11. So, in certain way it will be unique right. Let us see how to rectify. So, let us take this example. there is y p x y and q z. Now, is it rectified? So, there are three variables occurring in this formula x, y and z right and now you see x is a free variable and x is not bound. Okay. There is only one occurrence of the quantifier which uses y right and that y is bound here it is nowhere also free z is a free variable. So, this is already rectified fine. So, we say that this is already rectified. Suppose we take another say for each x p x implies q y and there is y q y. So, now again there are three variables occurring here x, y and z. x is a bound variable, it is not free, y is a free variable here, but y is also a bound variable here. So, it needs renaming fine. So, let us take the sub formula where it is bound which we can rename, free variables cannot be renamed, it will not preserve equivalence right. So, we write that as for each x p x implies q y and there is z q z. So, there are really two variables occurring here now there are three variables occurring here x is bound y is free z is also bound and there are two occurrences of the quantifiers they use different variables. So, this is rectified right. So, rectification is a simple process. Now, our next step is to bring all the quantifiers to the beginning right. So, how to bring them? We have to use certain laws, we need equivalence there. 
So now once it is rectified you can see that suppose I take a sub formula of this I can use my distributive loss there right. For distribution loss you need variables to be differently named otherwise the distribution may not occur like you have seen for example for each x p x implies q y say for each y here or let us say here for each x q x. Now this is not equivalent to for each x p x implies q x right it is not equivalent to that okay. If you take the distribution in and or r the same thing happens for each x p x or for each x q x is not equivalent to for each x p x or q x and it will be true for r it will not be and if you have existential quantifier or it will be true and it is not true right duality prevails. Similarly for implies also it will happen for implies both the things will happen right because quantifier will become different once you use the distribution. But once it is rectified the thing can be different for example here suppose it is for each x p x say we take the r case first or for each y q y okay. Now what happens is in this sub formula x does not occur this is r. So here x does not occur since x does not occur at all I can bring the quantifiers outside. So I say it is equivalent to for each x p x or for each y q y because x does not occur there whatever formula I put in there does not matter if x does not occur right. So next what I do I may say for each x for each y p x or q y. So this is the advantage of rectification now you can bring the quantifiers to the beginning but you can never bring it to the form for each x p x or q x that is fine but the quantifiers can be brought to the beginning maybe with many more quantifiers and so on right they will become equivalent now. So this is the thing we want to happen now. Now in general what to do there can be if and only if also biconditional occurring. So biconditional you do not have a distribution law directly right for example if you take for each x p x for each y q y this will not be equivalent to for each x for each y p x if and only if q y as happened for r okay for implies you have something to do not for biconditional. So first we need to change the biconditionals to implies and or any other form right. So let us stick to one say we will be changing all these biconditionals x biconditional to y is equivalent to say x implies y and y implies x right but there is one more problem there can be quantifiers here. So suppose quantifiers are there in the beginning or somewhere else now this biconditional with the quantifiers cannot be pulled as it is or that might because the formula what results in need not be rectified. it might require again another renaming that is possible. So what we do is before rectification eliminate this and then rectify right that is possible. So once that is realized we can go for the procedure how to proceed. Hmm. So this will be writing as starting from elimination of the biconditional. So first we would like to eliminate biconditional by using the equivalence x biconditional y is equivalent to x implies y 
and y implies x right. So, second you would try to rectify the formula. using rename ok that is clear. See our aim is to go for one where quantifiers will be in the beginning. Now, suppose there is a not symbol right. For example, it will start with uh, not for each y and everything else, for each y x then not for each y. Now, this not you cannot bring it to the, uh, you cannot take it to inside the formula, because our aim is to bring all the quantifiers in the beginning, but there is a not, so that has to be removed now, right. So, that means we have to move this not beyond this block of quantifiers, right. So, let us make it that not should be going to the predicates directly, that can be done right, that will be stronger, but that is fine. So, that can be done by using double negation and De Morgan right. So, let us do that first. Near the predicates, in fact we do not need to move it near the predicates, we can keep it outside the block of the quantifiers that is enough for us right. For example, there is not of x implies y, we do not need to put x and not y, it is enough if it is not inside the quantifiers, but better to do it anyway we will be going for the DNF and CNF right. So, this step is overburden, but we will take it, we will go along with it. So, this can be done by using uh, double negation, then implication okay, and then De Morgan. So, here you can if you want them to move near the not signs near the uh, predicates, you have to use other two also with and and r right if you need it this much is enough ok, you can have still the quantifiers outside. So, then what we use is not for each x, x is equivalent to there is x not x and also not there is x x is equivalent to for each x not x. Fine. So, here you may say if you need to make it better you may write x and y is not x or not y and also use the other one for the not of x or y which is not x and not y fine. Then comes the distribution part to do similar things. So, next we use distribution laws So, these distribution laws will be for the quantifiers, we need for the quantifiers ok. So, we write for each x ok, let us write x and y is equivalent to for each x x and for each x y and holds for every right. Similarly, there is x for r ok, with r one side only holds, but if it does not occur then that is also be all right right. So, you may say if x does not occur in x then some more we can have like for each x, x or y is equivalent to x 
or for each x y okay because this variable does not occur in capital x so there is no need to keep any quantifier there that will be equivalent similarly for and and there is okay now for the implies for each x x implies y will be equivalent to x implies for each x y okay and there is x similar right then for each x y implies x that is there is x y implies x it will change the quantifier because of this implies right because this is really not y or x so it will come to for each x not y which is not there is x y or x that is there is x y implies x similarly there is x y implies x is for each x y implies x right so this should be sufficient then whatever form you get of the formula that is called a pre next form or a pre next normal form usually we say pre next form only we will see how to bring the normal form so we say that a formula is in pre next form if it is in the form okay fair each qi is either for all or there is and x does not contain any quantifier okay so now in the pre next form the block of quantifiers in the beginning is called the prefix of the pre next form and then the formula having no quantifiers is called the matrix so there are some names right so it will be in the prefix and then the matrix matrix so prefix have all the quantifiers matrix does not have any quantifier so this procedure is called pre next form conversion So you take the first one. So there is x, p x y implies not for each y, q y and r y z and q x implies for each x x. Okay, so we just start with this formula. Now, what our procedure says is, if there is any biconditional, first eliminate it. There is no biconditional, so we go back to that, go pass pass that step. Next, what we have to do? Rectify it, right? So first, let's check. Here, x is bound. X is free here, right? So all the bound occurrences of X have to be renamed first, right? And then, what about Y? Y is here free. Y is also bound. So bound occurrence of Y also has to be renamed. And Z, 
z is only free it is not bound so we can leave it as it is right now for x you have a bound occurrence here you have another sub formula where also it is bound right so you will be using two different variables to rename it and y also should be renamed right we need three really three renamings so first x let us try so say there is u p u y implies now y also is to be renamed but not this free only bound occurrence is to be renamed okay so this gives not and then this y is to be renamed let us write as v q v and r v z and this is a free occurrence it has to be kept as it then this bound occurrence will be renamed differently so let us write for each x s w s w okay now is it rectified yeah u is only bound no here it is free v is only bound and then w is only bound z is free x is free okay next what we have to do is take the not signs inside okay so this is equivalent of there is u p u y implies now this not will go inside so that gives there is v not of this and so that is not of q v or not of r v z okay and q x implies for each w s w okay that is done so next is the distribution laws to pull the quantifiers to the beginning fine so usually it will be easier if you start from the innermost things you have to start from somewhere right if you can identify the innermost it will be easier manually but in a machine when it is implemented it will go from the left side it just scans from the left whatever it finds it tries to pull it right so let's follow that see what happens so this becomes there is u it's already in the beginning i don't have to do anything now this is the formula so this there is v can be pulled directly right which law you are using x implies there is something like this right something implies there is x something else so that gives you there is x will come to the beginning so that gives there is v p u y implies not q v or not r v z so i don't need to have a bracket here because of precedence rule that's all so i also don't need this even right this one i need not this one that's enough there can be more brackets but doesn't matter you can omit them later then what about here it is in the form x implies for each <coughs> like this so that will be for each w q x implies s w okay next step will be pulling this in fact when you use it this for all w will be in the beginning right okay there is some three this is my x or for each x y so x and for each x y it will be here right x and for each x y 
So, for each x, x and y that is here really because x does not occur there. So, this is for us. There exists still only for that first formula. Yeah, it is only for the first one. Right. So, first step will be what? If you apply that blindly, it will come to this. There is u, there is v, like this, and this, right? It will come to this. Huh? Okay. It will come to this. Right? Again, you have to pull it. Right? So it will come to for each w. There is u. There is v. Okay. You can also do it somewhere so that this for each w will be there in the beginning. There is u, there is v can be outside. Right, that is also possible because first you pull this one, then go for this and combine them differently. So that is also possible, right? And what I wanted yesterday, you for the exercise is so that they are equivalent. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Here for each W there is U or there is U for each W does not matter. We will see the region why it is happening. Well, let us consider this formula. Okay. Suppose we consider this formula, or even you may say there is ZQZ, does not matter. It will be easier to see this. Suppose I interpret this sentence in the set of all human beings. Okay. Now, P will be something like say y is father of uh, x, x has a father, it says, it says x has a father, right. P is for parents, x has some parents. Okay. And suppose Q means Q Z means Z has 12 fingers, 11 fingers, let us say, uh, you have one model for it. Okay. Z has 11 fingers. Now, what do we do? This sentence can be read as each person has parents and there is a person who has 11 fingers. Right? So, now when you bring it to this form, how does it look like? x y do not occur here, z does not occur here. right? So, you can just bring out in any way you like. So, it may look something like for each x there is y, there is z, p x y and q z and it can also be seen as there is for each x there is y, there is z can come here, p x y and q z. You can also bring it to the form for each x there is z, there is y, p x y and q z. Right? But for each x there is y will be together in that order, not necessarily together, there is z can come in between. That ordering is important. You cannot write there is y for each x, right? That will never happen. First for each x will come. Next, there is y will come in some order, but it does not matter for z. Now, can you read this? What does it say? So, there is z has come to the beginning. What does it say? Again, the same thing it says, right? Because this z does not matter what these x, y are, right? Whether that person has fingers. 11 fingers or not, it does not matter for anyone to having parents or not having parents. Right? So, this z does not depend on x and y 
and the reason is this is happening because there is no predicate in the whole sentence or whole formula which is having both x and z together. There is no one which is having both y and z together. Right? So, in a sense they are independent, there is no dependence between the variable z and the variables x and y. Fine? But there is a dependence between x and y in order that this is true, sentence is true, there is a dependence. This y will be something like a function of x, not exactly a function, right? it is like a function, it depends on this x particularly. So, when you say x is a parent of y is a parent of x, so that fixes in some sense, it cannot be anything arbitrary, but the other z can be very arbitrary, it does not depend on x and y either. right? So, the formal semantics whatever we have defined intuitively talks of this, though we have not fixed it anywhere, we have just defined it by induction. Anything you can have, some similar change will be like not sign you have to take care, right. But here it does not matter because z is simply independent, there is no uh, predicate having z and any of x and y. Right. So, it can just be pulled to the outside clear, but you have to show that what I told yesterday by formal semantics, okay. it can be done, intuition is this. Okay. <coughs> now, let us see, so this pre next form is not necessarily unique, there can be different ordering of the quantifiers, but they will be equivalent in this sense, if there is no predicate having those variables combinedly, then those quantifiers can be in different order, that is what it says, okay, it is allowed in the pre next form. Now, in this pre next form, this is the prefix and this is the matrix. Okay, Let us take another example. Okay, so, we just start with this. Then, first thing we have to do is eliminate the biconditional. This can create problem in the rectification. So, first we have to do that. So, that is there is x, p x implies not that is y, p y implies q x implies q y, and for each x, p x implies for each y q y and for each y q y implies p x. Okay. Right. Next thing is we rename the bound variables if necessary. So, here it is bound x is free anywhere, x is free here. right? So, you have to rename the bound variables, but x is not free here. No? It is not within this scope, it is within this scope. So, it is not free. Here, well, here it is not free, but within the same x. So, there are two quantifiers using the same variable x. This has to be renamed. Next, here is one quantifier there is y, here is also for each y, here is also for each y, they have to be renamed, right. So, let us rename them, there is x, p x implies not there is y, p y implies q x implies q y and now this x is to be renamed. So, we write for each x, say p u now x will be u okay and this y is to be renamed let's write for each z q z 
this y also is to be renamed. So, for each v q v implies this x within the scope. So, that is u right. Is that okay? So, next thing is take the knots to be the inside. There is x, p x implies this knot has to go inside. So, this becomes for each y knot of this whole thing, right. So, that is p y and knot of this. So, that is again q x and not of this. So, it does come up to this and now for each u there is nothing to be done here right. We had biconditional here, right? For each y, q y, uh, then it gives p x implies for all y, q y, and implies p x. So there is no bracket here. Okay. The bracket is uh, where here. Huh? Bracket should be here. Right. That is right. So, then you have bracket is here, huh? bracket is here, right. Then you have bracket here also, that is the modification. So, now what should we do here? So, start from this, let us start from this one, we are doing manually. So, you write there is x p x implies for each y p y and q x and not q y and for all u. Okay. What about this? For all z comes out. So, we write for all z p u implies q z and here also what will happen to this? It becomes there exists. So, there exists V Q V implies P U. Okay. Right. Okay. Let us keep that now. And here, what should we do? There is Z, P U implies Q Z, and there is V, Q V implies P U. Z does not occur here, V does not occur here. Right? So, you can just write for each U there is z, there is v, p u implies q z and q v implies p u, right. right? Next, we have after implies this and this whole formula. So, there we have to pull the quantifier similarly. You have u z v, u z v do not occur here and it is and. So, all those things can be coming together. So, you may write there is x p x implies all the quantifiers together in any order you like now this or this that only you can play with. You cannot play with this order now right. So, then let us write this way. P y and q x 
and not q y and p u implies q z and q v implies p u. Right. Next, we have to pull this block out. So, it is like there is x p x implies x or implies y, where x does not occur in y. So, now let us see uh, x does not occur in this formula, it occurs, x occurs here. Okay. So, first you have to think of this p x implies this quantifier, quantified formula, forget about there is x now, p x implies this, okay. x is free here, forgetting this, x is free. On the right side also there is x, but x is not one of the quantifiers, right. So, that can be pulled to the beginning and since it is on the right side of implication, nothing will change, it will be kept as it is. So, it will look like there is x for each y, for each u, there is z, there is v, p x implies the rest. Which one? This side, the last part one This from this to this? From this to this? So, what is the change for all y is here? For all y, this part is there. Now, only this part we are concerned. So, now for all u, uh, there is z, okay. this should be for all z. No? That's right. Huh? Good. Otherwise, it would carry over. Huh. So this for all will not change here. It will be kept as it is. Now let us look at this. So this gives p x implies the rest. So the rest means this one. Okay. Then next what to do? Nothing to do, it is over. Hmm? Just forget the bracket. So, this, this was for each z. No? So, that is how it will be proceeding. We have really entered formal manipulation now. So, all that we see here is that any formula can be brought to uh, one which is in pre next form. Now, if you want to convert it to some uh, DNF or CNF, you may have to redefine what is a literal, what is a disjunctive class, and so on. That is easy. So, you just say that any atomic formula is a literal. Any negation of an atomic formula is also a literal. Right? That comprises your literals, either an atomic formula or negation of an atomic formula. Then, ands of all those atomic formulas or literals in general, they will be conjunctive clauses. Then, ors of literals will be disjunctive clauses. Right? Then, CNF is conjunction of disjunctive clauses. DNF is disjunction of conjunctive clauses, right. So, that is how you will get DNF or CNF. Now, all those 
definitions will be useful for converting the matrix of a formula. Right? Once it is in prenex form, you consider its matrix. Forget the prefix now. This matrix can be brought to CNF or DNF equivalently using that definition. Right? So once you brought that form, you call that formula as prenex conjunctive normal form or prenex disjunctive normal form. Right? So you just tell PCNF or PDNF. So both are combinedly called PNF, prenex normal forms. This is the prenex form. Once you convert it to either CNF or DNF, it is called prenex normal form. If it is in CNF, the matrix, you say it is PCNF. If the matrix is in DNF, you say it is PDNF. Right? We will not use this normal forms very frequently because we have something better. After this, we will be doing where we will be using this normal forms again. But after doing something, we will be converting to normal forms. 